cool. Okay, what's going on, guys? Today I got something fun to share with you. This is the Bergenger X Touch Mini, and today we're going to talk about this specific mini controller and how you can have it control Lightroom. We're going to briefly get into how to customize this controller and set it up, get it going, and we'll talk about uh, MIDI 2 LR, the app that lets you use any other MIDI controller and have it translate to Lightroom. So. There's going to be a more detailed breakdown on my website. If you go there, there'll be links to download presets, profiles, and uh, where you can pick up any of this hardware. So be sure to check that out. And then also we're going to do a demo. So uh, let's jump into it. Hey! Hey! All right, so what's, what's great about this uh, Bergenger X-Touch Mini is that you can uh, adapt it. It's, it's, it's used pretty commonly amongst uh, these Lightroom modders and uh, it works really well with MIDI 2 LR. One of the best things it's got going for it are these encoder knobs, which have an LED fan, and when you switch from photo to photo, based on the parameter, it will change. So it'll have its current value. You can push these buttons, and they will reset. So there's a lot of functionality to it. It's got a layer A and layer B, where buttons do different things between the layers. And then with MIDI 2 LR, you can uh, assign buttons to load different profiles and then the knobs and buttons do different things so it gets exponentially deeper with that and uh, this is just just kind of the intro to it um, at the end of this video I'm gonna go through a basic rundown on how to set this up and get it going uh, first we're gonna do a demo but be sure to check out the website if you're if you're gonna follow along just to get every link and all the details First, before I jump in how I'd actually use it, I want to just go through um, the buttons and how I have it set up. This is layer A and this is layer B. Undo, redo, and forward, backwards, I set up to be universal. So it doesn't matter which layer I'm in or which profile I'm in, they're going to always do forward, backward, undo, redo. All right, so let's start with layer A. Uh, pretty simple. So that's going to be exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, contrast, straighten, and current selected. I can just grab a photo, even if I'm in grid view or whatever, I just hit the exposure and it goes right into that edit. If I tap it, it'll go back to its original state. I can easily just pull up exposure, bring in highlights, bring down shadows, bring down whites, whatever I like to do. Oh, pretty quickly. So straightens, straightens pretty great, especially if you got just a couple photos when you're kind of reviewing and you just want to quickly straighten out. I love that. I mashed this edit. This edit's pretty whack. But it just gives you an idea of, of how quickly you have these layer A controls. The other uh, commands I put on layer A are the purple label. The purple label doesn't have a keyboard shortcut by default, so I use the purple label, and it's great to be able to put it to a key. Virtual copy I use quite a bit in here. Um, the pick and reject, and these are basically kind of culling tools. So these are just review tools with basic exposure and uh, color correction. So that's what layer A does. Layer B jumps into profiles. And uh, it changes the knobs to do um, sharpening. So it's contrast clarity, dehaze, sharp, and then sharpness radius, uh, sharpness detail, and masking. If I go in layer B and then hit this button, which says color, it'll change the sliders to do color. So this will be temperature, I can just show you tent, saturation, vibrance, um, that's all whack. We don't need to actually see that. And then what's nice here is I put um, split tone. So I use split tone quite a bit and I like to just throw the saturation to 100 just to see what it's doing and then find my hue. I want and then I dial it back or just reset and bring it in. And then same goes with the highlights too. Just move around pretty easy and touch them up. And then if I went to layer A on color, it's gonna do the color calibration. So these tools are usually pretty hidden way down at the bottom of your uh, Lightroom. But I found with this mapped out onto the color slider and physical knobs, I'm actually using some of these. And it's just another way to adjust your reds, your greens, and your blues, and kind of dial them in. I think these are applied 
before any of the other color corrections. So these are uh, just another way to alter your colors and uh, kind of dial it in. So I, I, I like that mode. I have to go back to layer B and then I'm in hue. And then now each of these adjust the hue for the color labeled on here. So if I wanted to grab the greens, I can move those around. Let's grab some oranges. So you can see I'm hitting those, that hue. Really easy to find. Oh, not that easy. Cool, so you guys have fun with this. And then you can go to the next one, which is saturation. A little whack. I love the resets. And then luminance. Cool, so you get the idea. After luminance, we have, um, well, in the luminance, if I went to layer A in luminance, then this would do a black and white conversion. I grab, it's gonna convert it to grayscale, and then these are gonna be adjusting the luminance value of each of the sliders. Pretty sweet. This one I like a lot, this is uh, the crop mode. So the crop mode is gonna be my perspective. So I can adjust my vertical and horizontal perspective, along with, what do we got? Aspect ratio. Scale. And you're not supposed to mess with these, but I mess with them all the time because if you got some sort of architecture and you want to get it lined up and you don't have the right lens to get it going, you could just fix it in post. Cool. That was kind of crazy, but just to show you, but if we were to look at the before and after, I mean, we did quite a bit. It's not a great edit, but we did quite a bit to this uh, to this photo without touching the keyboard or the mouse too much. So, um, oh, lens distortion. Wait, wait. Oh, that's current value. So, woo. Let's undo, 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 redo. All right, so if I go back into crop, and this other one is lens distortion. That's also nice to have on a slider. Cool. Um, the last one is vignette. So we have um, pre-crop crop vignette and then post-crop. So Pretty cool. Uh, I really like. I like using this system. Um, some things I noticed is that really everyone's workflow is uh, unique. So I spend a lot of time moving around buttons and reprogramming the whole thing. So you can use my setup as a starting point, but I think it's pretty cool to set up your own. And if we were in layer B, we could copy this, edit, and then paste this one down. Boom. And what's nice is that you can customize the uh, pace settings and the preferences so that um, you see it didn't paste any of the transform properties or any of the localized masks. So I just set that up um, by my, my favorites. I could also have another paste option here which is going to do a complete paste which would funk it up. So it's pretty cool to have um, this kind of level of detail to the customization of this. Uh, one thing I never used was this slider. It really is worthless. Um, any parameter you program this to be, it's just gonna uh, be worthless when you go to the next photo because it's not motorized. These encoder knobs, these will change as you change photos. So completely useful. You go to this and also the values it has, I tried program it to do uh, lights out or any kind of like just simple task and it was, it was, I was just chasing my tail. The upgraded um, higher level of these Berginger MIDI controllers, they have physical sliders. So you could use that and they're actually gonna move the physical sliders between photos, kind of crazy. Um, what else here? Cool. Uh, when I'm actually going through photos, 
it's pretty quick. I can jam on this thing. It's like I'm playing a video game. Uh, I, I, I know a combo move. I can get in and out of profiles within a few seconds. Um, it's, it's really, it comes down to I'm waiting for the computer <laughs> again. And the computer, uh, you know, have a hard time keeping up with me. I'm not That's how you use the X-Touch. I want to uh, talk about how I modded this and um, how I got it set up. Straight out of the box, some of these buttons will um, repeat notes. So when the MIDI 2LR program sees this button and this button playing the same note, they're going to do the same thing. So you have to use a PC application. It's only for PC and it's the Berginger X-Touch Editor. And what this allows you to do is to, um, someone already went through the trouble of assigning different notes for each button. So you can find these um, presets on the web. I made them available on my website. But what you're going to do is you're going to open the program, you load a, let me see. Yeah. So you go to from hardware and you get get a, dump a to hardware, get b, dump b to hardware. It's just that simple. If you got a friend with a PC or parallels, it'll take you a couple seconds. So that was the hardest part. Uh, for me, the USB cable that it came with didn't recognize when I plugged it in the PC. It worked with Mac, but not the PC. So I swapped out that cable for another one, and then it registered. So if you have any issue registering, check out the uh, USB cable. Um, setting up MIDI 2LR is pretty simple. It's an open source program for PC and Mac. Uh, you can go to the website, put a link. And basically, when you launch it, it will let you push a button and it runs in the background and you can check out the, the app and assign a function. And there are, let's check it out. It's basically every function from Lightroom you could think of. It goes from general to library, ratings, uh, develop settings, tone curve, HSL. And uh, some parameters are better for knobs and some are for buttons. You know, if you want to copy, it wouldn't make sense to twist that. And if you want to change exposure, well, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that very well with a button uh, as well. So just keep that in mind. You can download my presets and that'll be a good jumping off point. I feel like everyone's workflow is a little different. It took me a while of messing around before I got happy with the setup. But um, that's basically MIDI 2LR. Uh, if you follow it along, just make sure that you have your profiles. If you're using multiple profiles, you have them named the same name that they are in the plugin options. And if you don't know what that means, go to my website and I took some screenshots and explained how to set that up. Let's see. Oh yeah, I got a uh, MIDI to Bluetooth adapter. And what this takes is this takes this USB signal and makes it a Bluetooth signal. The only thing is it needs to be powered, so I bought a USB power bank, one that was slim and had an LED readout, and this powers this Yamaha uh, MIDI to Bluetooth adapter. And I was worried that there might be some lag or something with it, and it's just as responsive as with the cord, and it's great because now I have a, uh, I also got a short cord for this and some razor, risers, but uh, now it's just wireless. It works really well with my laptop because I don't have as many uh, USB ports with it, and just kind of uh, when I'm switching with the keyboard. It's just, it's nice to have wireless. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I bought some stickers because when I change the HSL, it's gonna um, be for the color assigned. So I bought these tiny little, tiny little stickers on Amazon. I put a link on my website. So that's basically it. Cool, hit me up with the comments on um, any questions that you have along this process. I had a, some trouble figuring it out, so just hit me up and if you do customize it and you'd have some fun with it, send me a picture. I want to check it out. All right. Thanks, guys.